Well, greetings to yet another rendition of She Unleashed. It is a Saturday afternoon and we have a power packed session today. She Unleashed is a podcast that talks to you about women's issues. We have an interest on corporate women and we give you toolkits on how to better improve in how you maneuver the world of corporate. So we talk about all the different topics. We talk about your health, we talk about the political dimensions of corporate and how you can best maneuver uh, the corporate world. Today, particularly, we are touching on a very important topic, which we often leave behind the scenes as women. Today's topic is networking and how you can best leverage networking for your career growth. And today I'm joined by a phenomenal speaker and she was my old boss in a different role and also such an advocate for women progression in a corporate environment. Today I'm joined by Otema Yigerinyi, who is based in the UK and she is holding a phenomenal post as the vice president for the Project Management Institute and she's held a number of different high profile roles. She was previously a senior at Vodafone. She was with Microsoft. So she understands the world of corporate and the topic at hand today called networking. Otema, thank you very much for gracing us with your presence today and welcome. Thank you so much to having me be on the show. I am very excited to share with you my small insights, right? <laughs> Never small coming from you. <laughs> Otima, we, we spoke and, and I think last week or uh, two weeks ago, you wrote a, a, an article on networking, mm -hmm. the importance of networking. It tends to be something that we tend to shy away from as women. What have you learned about networking? and how it can be leveraged in the corporate environment for our progression. Yeah, so let me first say, I think you need to network with intentionality. Mm -hmm. And I mean that by saying, one, be very clear as to the goal of the networking. In mm -hmm. the article I wrote, I said, it's not about going to have drinks and, and uh, profiling, right? It's really mm -hmm. about, do I have an objective? So let me give you a specific example. So you are a business person and maybe the chamber in your uh, city is having an event. Look at who the speakers may be, who's going to be attending. And so you ask yourself, is there going to be a marketing opportunity for me there? Will I be able to profile my brand? Will I be able to, maybe there's something that you want to understand about a new regulation. Will the re someone from the regulatory area be there? So again, have the plan, right? So you know what the topic is, what the plan is of attack, if you will, right? And I've seen my male colleagues do that. They are very intentional, very focused. Oh, I wanna meet this person. I wanna meet that person. And it's gonna improve my business in this way. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the number one thing you need to network with intentionality for clear mm -hmm. results. Mm -hmm. It's not a natural kind of predisposition because mm -hmm. we've been taught we need to be ladies, we need to sit in a corner, and we also, you know, are averse to actually approaching people. Mm -hmm. How do we work on that aspect of us as women? Because naturally, you also don't want to be approaching with people. You don't know how to approach them. How sure. have you found yourself navigating that space? Well, the first thing you do is like, you know, you'll be surprised. There's six degrees of separation for most people. So mm. typically, if I want to meet someone, I think about who do I know who may know them? Mm. And I find in either mentoring relationships or networking, the introduction is key. So mm. say you are going to that chamber event and you've seen that um, a particular individual is there. First of all, have a look on LinkedIn. Who do you know that might know them? Mm. And then they might be attending. So I always meet people through others. You know, you leverage through others. So if you are, I'm now I am quite... Uh, you know, I speak publicly and stuff, but I used to be very shy. You mm -hmm. know, I was a very shy person. And, um, but I realized that I do have a wide circle. So think about networking as circles. Who do you know in your inner circle who might know somebody in the next circle and then in the next circle? And then that brings you to 
the objective of who you want to meet and what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So would you say we're getting better at networking as women? Because I often I found, so. yeah. But, but there's one thing I do want to talk about, and we are in a, uh, in a circle of trust amongst women. One of the issues too around networking is a lot of senior people do tend to be men. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to approach them in a way in which you, they, you might they'll think, hmm, what's going on here, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's something that holds back a lot of women because mm -hmm. they don't want it to appear that, am I appearing too forward? Mm -hmm. And so what I often say is, and I say this particularly to the young women that I coach, mm -hmm. that it's important for you to feel a sense of psychological safety, right? Mm -hmm. We need to be safe in the networks that we're in and when we're networking. Mm -hmm. And that's why I often tell a lot of the young women, if you know another woman, ask her to introduce you up mm -hmm. into her circle, mm -hmm. right? So I often am very intentional about bringing young women into my circle so that they know that they're safe and whoever they're gonna be networking with is someone I know and then I can say this person is reliable. So that's a very important thing I learned very early on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, know, you want to network in psychological safety. Mm -hmm. And so that means using your current circle to then grow out and make sure that the people or persons that you're networking with are safe, if you know what I mean. I get you. One of the other aspects that seem to always show up is women are protective over their networks. Mm. And sometimes you, you, you do want to access a specific network, but there seems to be a hoarding mm. or a 20 hurdles to jump before I can give you my mm. network. What can you teach or what can you advise other women about growing the network, but still, you know, be protective. It's okay to be protective over your network mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's about you as well. Sure, sure. So this is what I was talking about, the safety, right? So you kind of know you will over time. So one, if you are a more senior woman, mm -hmm. and of course you want to ensure, you know, your reputation and your brand, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So you, you will do a bit of a reference, you know, who is it that this person is? And mm -hmm. normally I find if people come ready and prepared, they're clear about their objectives. I know this person is serious. And then that's, that's the extent of the vetting, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can trial right by putting them into somebody again who you know is safe and is supportive but as women i want to emphasize this point we have got to open up the network because it's not that big for us so mm -hmm. being protective hmm i question that to a degree right because what you do want to do is to have more particularly if you're a senior woman open up and bring more women on board because it won't then be so difficult for most women to network. So that's what I would say. If you are a senior woman, I get enormous amount of um, connections. I accept almost all of them. Then I think through who will I, who can I support directly, but who else maybe somebody else can support. So that way I'm opening it up without it being a real drain for me, but they are getting something. They're benefiting from the reach out that they did. I'll say, oh, okay, Pumza, um, I know Lentley in South Africa. Let mm -hmm. me connect you to her, mm -hmm. right? And then it opens up the network. Mm -hmm. There's an old adage that says your network is your net worth. However, mm -hmm. as women, we seem to not have a skill on mm -hmm. cashing up on the networks. What do you think is our hindrance? Because we may know people, but to actually approach them on a business level, there's always that awkwardness about asking for favors. What can you See, give us as advice there? So a lot of times, one thing I noticed that men do very well is that in a, uh, that kind of situation, it's always clear about what they're giving to benefit as well. So mm -hmm. a clear sort of give and take so that the relationship is beneficial on both sides. Mm -hmm. So you're not, when you're networking, um, it's not just about what the person can do for you, but what can you do for them? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very important uh, bit of the networking. So when I go and I approach somebody, um, let's say a very senior executive, I might look to say, mm, 
Do they have a charity? Is there something they're involved in? I, I'm intentional in trying to understand them and to show how can I add value to them as well? It's mm -hmm. not just about me going and taking. And I think if you do it from the perspective of this should be a two-way flow, mm -hmm. that's very important. And I love what you just said, because that's where the power is. Because mm -hmm. I think we often tend to look for the one-sided kind of relationships where I'm just asking and I need a favor right. to be made. But mm -hmm. it's, it's a powerful network where it's on an equal footing, where I give something and you give something. I think that's a healthy kind of networking. It is. What are you finding are the mistakes that we make as women in networking? I think that we sometimes, maybe we just target the most senior person. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, there is a lot of value. Say you're looking to break through in a company and you say, gosh, you know, I need to be talking to the chief of, you know, CFO, CMO, whatever. But maybe there's a director there who's high flying, rising, that can connect you within that organization. So I think you've got to network. Think about it as you networking up, but also in the middle and even down. I've made tremendous uh, growth through having great relationships with a senior executive's assistant, right? Mm -hmm. And then you, you get on their calendar. Mm -hmm. You know, when I used to sell, um, in, in my former life, you know, I remember at IBM, um, we had, it was in a particular African country, and uh, it was so difficult to see this minister, right? Mm -hmm. And so one day, you know, when I was meeting with the, trying to get an appointment with the minister, I had a lovely conversation with the assistant. She loved the, um, uh, I think it was like the perfume or something that I had. Mm -hmm. And then, so what I did was I chatted with her, I understood her needs. And then the next time I was back in that country, I had a lovely little gift for her. And let me tell you, <laughs> I always got appointments to see the person, but it was because I took the time Remember to network with the little people is what I would say. Some people in quotation marks, right? Because mm -hmm. you're so focused on the boss, mm -hmm. but she held his calendar. She was a wonderful person. I got to know her, hear about her children, her, her likes. And on my trips, I would always reach out to her. And every single time I wanted to see that particular government minister, he was so busy, but I always got an appointment because of her. So remember that in your networking. But that's the powerful part as well, because PAs are actually the gatekeepers. If they don't like you, forget about gaining access to that person. Exactly. Exactly. In your, in your career progression, uh, Otema, in which instances has networking helped you within the corporate environment? And what are the milestones that you've achieved and you realize that it was actually good to network there? So I would say in every single company, and I think the one that's most profound, I spent 14 years at IBM and um, networking there profoundly helped me to move up because one, they had formal um, affinity groups, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, black executives, female executives, they had different groups, but you could, um, there were many people who went to the groups, but didn't reach out to any of the executives. And I said, no. If I'm attending these sessions, if I'm going for uh, the trainings, I am going to reach out and build a, a relationship with mm -hmm. some of these executives, right? Mm -hmm. And in doing that, I got to hear and be exposed to what's the plan, what's coming forward in terms of, and what are the areas that I need to build my skills? Mm -hmm. And in doing that, I was able to then apply for more senior roles because I even knew they were coming. And I got to, for example, I wrote in the article around how I actually took an international assignment in South Africa because of my mentor support to say, you know, you, it's time for you to do that stretch, work in a different country, mm -hmm. uh, apply yourself in different ways. But if I hadn't networked in that um, grouping, I would have never met that individual who could then coach and guide my career. So I think don't be afraid. And this is coming from someone who used to be very shy. And I think intuitively, I'm an, I'm an introvert. Mm -hmm. But you, if you go with your plan, so what helps me as an introvert is that I plan my interactions, okay? Mm -hmm. So what is it that I wanna get? What do I know about the person? So do that research, mm -hmm. super important. 
mm. understand and be clear as to what you want and what you can give. So that preparedness helps um, re reduce the awkwardness. Mm. And you also come across as somebody who, hey, this person knows what they want. I went to this women's uh, leadership thing. I'll tell you this little story. Mm -hmm. And they said, one of the challenges of women is that we don't assert ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. we don't brag about ourselves. We don't lift ourselves up. Right. And they did a little exercise and they asked every woman, you know, two seconds, you know, say just a minute, introduce yourself. Every woman introduced themselves as who they are in relationship to. So I'm a mother, I'm a wife, um, you know, I do this on the PTA. Uh, they did associative, that is how they showed the strength of who they were. Mm -hmm. And they said, traditionally, men, when asked to introduce themselves, they first talk about who they are. I am a doctor. I am the head of the uh, Lions Club. I am. And so they, they talk about this term called a bragalogue. Mm -hmm. So you as a woman, how can you brag about yourself that's not about who you relate to, right? It's about the I. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's a little bit easier for men to network because they're very intuitively, naturally saying, hey, I am da da da. I am. And they're able to project this confidence mm -hmm. <laughs> and the ability to say and position themselves. Mm -hmm. So I would say to your audience, think about um, doing this little exercise and say, I am, what is, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Mm -hmm. Try to make it something that's an I statement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am a leading entrepreneur in cosmetics. Mm -hmm. Don't first lead with, you know, your relational. And they, they note that women tend to naturally go to that. So, mm -hmm. and it's uncomfortable. So that's, Part of what makes things a little bit uncomfortable because we're not comfortable bragging about ourselves so mm -hmm. that's what i would say to the audience try to try to practice that in the mirror i am and think about the things you've accomplished mm -hmm. and that you've done so tell me um i see there's a lot of preparation that needs to go into the networking have yeah. you ever experienced any networks that are really difficult to break mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, those networks that are difficult to break, I start to do the chip away. You know, how do I chip, chip, okay. chip, right? And so chipping away, it could be through the PA, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, which can be a very wonderful gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. um, chipping away also through, um, as I mentioned, is there somebody you know that knows somebody in that network? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, chip away that way. So sometimes it's not an immediate, you can jump in, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. you're gonna have to chip away slowly uh, to get in. But mm -hmm. once you get in, make sure you make it count. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you've only got, that's why the research is important. Mm -hmm. You only have maybe one chance mm -hmm. to talk to that CEO one chance to talk to that uh, supplier um, person who's going to be, you know, or one chance to talk to procurement. So don't mess it up. Mm -hmm. And then the, the other side to it is that we often to take things personal. So oh, if yeah. I try to get into a network, um, I probably would not realize that maybe what I've offered in exchange for the network is not a maybe a palatable offer for the person I'm offering it to. Mm -hmm. What can we learn about re-strategizing if it did not work in the first time around? Not to take it personally now and just, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> go to my corner and decide that I will never open that door again, but to take the lessons in trenches as well. Yeah, so I, I think that like, you know, you, you fall down seven times, you get up eight, you know, mm -hmm. that's the, that expression. And it's so important to just keep applying yourself and then doing your research, ask yourself, is this really the right network? Because mm -hmm. sometimes, um, you know, the universe is trying to tell you something, right? That maybe this isn't the way towards uh, the success that you're thinking. And so um, in that pivot, pause and research again and mm -hmm. think about maybe this isn't the right channel for me and ask yourself maybe why. So mm -hmm. you can continue to chip away, 
but you must ask yourself at a certain point, when should I pivot? Mm -hmm. When do I need to look at a different uh, strategy altogether? Um, so you, you're going to have to make that decision between um, when do I continue to chip away? When do I continue to maybe rethink my strategy mm -hmm. and then look at a different uh, networking channel? So I think that's going to be a decision point for each individual. How have external networks helped you, uh, Otema, in networking better and gaining access to other networks? Why I'm asking that is um, I found that uh, belonging to certain organizations or associations also mm -hmm. helps to extend how you can access other networks outside of just your immediate networks. How has it played out in your world? Uh, it's been extremely helpful. Um, I participate in my university's network. Uh, you know, so I went to a very big university. I went to Cornell. And uh, I also joined the Cornell Club. And the, there's Cornell Clubs in many cities. And so in the cities that I've been in, I've been able to have a, a venue to, to meet business contacts because they usually have a nice club. Um, and then there's also a great network of professionals that I've uh, maintained contact with. So for me, it's been very useful um, to be in that particular club uh, because it's given me a broader network. So I would agree with you that find uh, other groups that maybe you're naturally have an affinity to. Because I think also to, you need to be authentic in that. You don't want to just join something because you know you think, oh, this is what. Because once you get in there, you'll find that you're you're not making those those connections mm -hmm. because there's no there's no basis for the connection. You mm -hmm. see what I mean? So it's very important if you're going to join the Lions or Rotary, be truly interested in what they're doing. Because if you go to another Rotarian group or other network, um, it, it'll it'll show up that. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not really being authentic and you're not, you're not truly interested in what's going on. So that's important to, to be authentic in how you network is important. So we've been talking about a lot of do's. What are the don'ts, the bizarre don'ts of network that you can think of? <laughs> Um, I mean, you know, I've had uh, some people, I remember one company, I had someone just show up, you know, they looked me up and they showed up with their CV and they said, you know, they want, they want a job and, or, or I should mentor them. So though they thought it was a, a brave move, it was too much, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it didn't show thoughtfulness in their planning. So I think it's important to reach out to people but think through how you're going to do it, mm -hmm. right? I, again, it might seem like I'm saying be very thoughtful, but it does matter because if you're prepared and you're thoughtful, the interaction can be meaningful. You may not always get what you want, but you'll leave a good impression. And that's important because let me tell you this. I, um, years ago, I uh, worked with someone briefly on, on a project. Um, it was a volunteer thing left a good impression, and then they, are, they then became a very senior person, and um, I needed them for a particular uh, business opportunity. And because of the impression that I left, they, they said, oh, yeah, that was awesome. I did, you know? So that, yeah. you want that reference point. Now, this individual who just kind of showed up unannounced and pushed, tried to push their way through, they mm -hmm. didn't leave a good impression. Right. Mm -hmm. So if in subsequent encounters, I may not be receptive. Mm -hmm. So one of the don'ts is don't leave a bad impression. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Whatever you do, don't leave a bad impression because it sticks with people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you are alluding to a question I want to raise, and um, mm -hmm. it's 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 the how, and you've raised it. You've spoken about it because there almost is like a technique of doing it because mm -hmm. it can't be obvious that Otema wants this. And I mean, the planning that we're talking about is the behind the scenes kind of planning. Right. Right. But there's almost is a technique at, that you would approach people with. Mm -hmm. And even on the research content, but almost expressing it as something of particular interest. Let's make an example. Pumza, you've researched Pumza. Mm -hmm. You've picked up that Pumza has a son who has an interest in, 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 in soccer. 
So mm -hmm. it's almost like you you kind of angle the conversation sure. to protect on the areas of interest. Absolutely. How, yeah. And I wanted to you to, to expand better or expand on the on the on the how because it almost has to feel like you have not asked me for a favor once you know you've done all this work behind the scenes because you want ABC. Sure. So let's let's pretend Pums, that we're at a um, an event, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a, a dinner or whatever. So um, I would have done my research about you. I understand you mm -hmm. uh, a bit, right? And mm -hmm. so we are sitting at the table together. We happen to be at that uh, black tie event table. Mm -hmm. And so first, you know, trying to first warm, so warm the conversation, I would say. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. people normally mm -hmm. um, respond to people on a personal level. So start mm -hmm. on the personal level. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to understand a bit about before going straight to the business, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I want to say, warm the conversation with a personal discussion. So mm -hmm. you found out uh, that there's common interests. So mm -hmm. start with the common interests. I would mm -hmm. go there. Mm -hmm. And then um, people um, do like, uh, you know, to be complimented in some way. So let's say, for example, they've recently won an award or they have um, achieved something, you can say, oh, you know, uh, Pumza, I saw that you were on the cover of Forbes Africa or something. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a great article. Make sure you've actually read the article so that you can <laughs> maybe uh, <laughs> say something relevant there. Mm -hmm. But so you warm it up with a personal, mm -hmm. you may compliment them. Um, but not in a, again, you need to be authentic about it, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it should flow into the conversation mm -hmm. and then bring in something about yourself, what you're doing, um, and then look for that engagement. Now, mm -hmm. there's also something really important, um, being situational, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you're in a situation and you see that the person have emotional intelligence, they're not really paying attention, they're not engaging. Is there an opportunity to follow up with a meeting? Okay, mm -hmm. so situation is very important. So when I'm networking, I don't, um, I warm it up. Maybe, it, it, maybe it's appropriate to say something uh, around complimenting them or whatever. If you're not finding the engagement and the person, you might say, you know, I would love to talk to you further about X, Y, Z, you know, mm -hmm. could we set up a brief call or could, you know, I, can I meet you, et cetera, right? And so, especially if you've met at, let's say a banquet, a dinner type thing, it's more of a social, you may not want to strike a business deal. And that's where situation or being situational is so critical for your networking. Mm -hmm. Where am I? What's going on? And, and also, it's not one and done. If you feel like this is someone you really want to engage with, you need to try to get the follow-up, the follow-up, right? So I think that's very, very important. So that's how I sort of play it in my own mind. Mm -hmm. If I'm in a situation, so, uh, so if you have a business card, obviously it's the business card. You can say, you know, who do I need to, so be probative. Who do I need to uh, reach out to, to maybe make the appointment? Clink, you've gotten their assistance mm -hmm. contact. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, so you, you have to be very thoughtful about it. So warm it, make the connection at the table, mm -hmm. be engaging in the chatter. Um, then if you want to move it further, the next step is around um, looking for, as I call it, what's the points of light? Where can you find connection together? Mm -hmm. Which then says, oh, then situationally, is this the appropriate time to ask for the meeting or should I do the follow-up? So you're playing all that uh, scenario in your mind, but you should have thought that through a bit so that you're clear as to how you do it when you're doing it. Now for me, it's almost like, um, it comes second nature. Mm -hmm. so long. It comes and that was nature. so well articulated because sometimes we, 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 can't, we can't find the steps, you know, we can't mm -hmm. actually articulate how you do it. And that was so uh, well and precisely articulated. Now, Otima, besides the big accolades that are corporate related, I know that you have 
a bit of an arty type to your side, an arty <laughs> side to you. I know that you are a poet in your uh, spare time. You also have podcasts that you re re record. Tell us a bit about that and how does that help you as an outlet of finding your creative side and helps you as well back to the networking side because you have a broader range of things to talk about now. Mm, absolutely. I think that um, people engage with people they find interesting, mm -hmm. right? And that, that they're attracted to. So that that's one thing. But I think for me, my creative side has always helped me to connect myself to people right so my poetry i write to connect and to share my voice about my views and to be inspirational right and to motivate i think one of the key things why i write and i'm creative is to motivate but it's also helped me improve my public speaking and improve my ability to get out there and face your fears mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so um, my creativity is actually my comfort zone. I mean, that's where I'm most comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that helps a lot. But what I have found, so for example, I, many years ago, I got to read um, at uh, the Museum of Women and Art, and uh, that was for the World Bank. Now, the two came together because I was doing something different at the World Bank, and then they got to know I was reading. I do poetry, so I read for their board. Uh, when they were having a board session, and then I got to read um, at uh, one of the when their uh, outgoing president was uh, leaving. They had a reception. They said, "Oh, come and read there again." So look at how the the artistry has allowed me into forums that I may not have gotten into, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. and that that connected me to a lot of. Um, executives um, and international development people within uh, the World Bank just mm -hmm. because of my artistry. So so sometimes it, it's the, the corporate informs the artistry and sometimes the artistry informs the corporate, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so think of yourself holistically, like many, many people now, many corporate executives, they have many other things that they do that they bring to the table. And that makes for a richer, obviously, for their own lives, but also in terms of the network mm -hmm. that you are um, engaged with. So that's what I would say. That's powerful. So what is the name of the podcast and where can we find it? My podcast is uh, Catching a Glimpse, and it's available on Anchor. So if you go onto Anchor or Spotify, Google, as well as Apple. So any of the podcast channels, you will find it there. So take a listen. Awesome. Awesome. I've listened to it, and I can really, really confirm that it's an absolutely interesting podcast worth hearing because that's where you appear as the poet and the creative side comes through it's quite quite interesting do listen into it now Otima there's also a side to you where you coach women you coach organizations you are also involved as a shareholder in um, Nexinova which is an organization that looks at accelerating startups and uh, based in Africa so how do people access you in that context when they wanting Otema, we want to hear more about you, we want to hear about the motivational side to you. How do they reach you? So um, at the moment, um, we, we have some companies that, uh, that I'm coaching. And, uh, and as always, with the schedule that I have, um, so we're starting to think about how do we get ourselves out more Mm -hmm. um, to be able to coach because it's it's difficult. I can only coach but so many. Mm -hmm. So watch this space as we think through um, how can we maybe more digitally give those um, those nuggets, those mm -hmm. um, those really important lessons that we are with the companies that we support. Now we're thinking ourselves how do we scale, mm -hmm. right? So that's where mm -hmm. we are now. So watch this space. I'll come back uh, very soon to talk to. Um, maybe you again, mm -hmm. about how we're working uh, to scale, because we've been very customized and very focused on our companies. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the things we do just to share is that we're focused on helping them to look at their business um, and assessing their business, helping them to say, how can I improve my sales and marketing? 
really getting out there, improving their pitch and their positioning of their products. Mm -hmm. We also have them look at um, financially, how mm -hmm. can they more effectively look at their total financial structure, their projections, how they can grow, and then also, are they ready for investment, uh, mm -hmm. external investment? We look at that. Mm -hmm. This was, for me, certainly a very eye-opening uh, discussion because you've managed to decode something that people think it must be a natural flame. And here you are saying that, look, I'm an introvert by nature, but I've learned the tactics of how to do networking better and how to leverage the relationships that I get out of, of it. Because it's almost seen as it must be your personality. You must be a pumza who's easy to, you know, right. get into. And it, 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 it actually is not. Anyone can actually network for their benefit, eh? Absolutely. I mean, there's going to be certain people that are, have a natural flair, right? Mm -hmm. But I think there is the opportunity for everyone to build up the capacity and the capability to network more effectively mm -hmm. than they do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Autumn. It was certainly a good way to spend a Saturday afternoon. I've learned a lot and we look forward to all the strides you'll be making in the coming months. And we're hoping to have you back to tell us what you've been doing and why, how you've managed to scale yourself more now to be in touch with many more organizations. Thank you very much. The depth of this was really worth recording. Thank you so much, Otema. Thank you so much for having me. And I had a wonderful time. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.